Around nine months ago, I installed a pair of Trina Vertex 450 watt panels on my flat garage roof, increasing our overall panel array size by 20%, going from 4.5 to 5.4 kilowatt peak. Since then, I've just assumed that they're still working fine, but with nine months data now under my belt, can I quantify how much power they've actually generated? Hi, I'm Chris and welcome back to the channel. Well, that sounds a straightforward problem to tackle. Surely I can just pull the information from my Solis Cloud app. Unfortunately not, and let me explain why. Our original installation comprised two banks of six Jinko Solar 375 watt panels installed on broadly east and west facing roof pitches. When adding the two new panels, to keep costs down, I chose to connect them in series with the existing east-facing string, so no additional inverter was needed. I'll go into more detail about why I chose the Trina panels and the issues to be considered in this video I made about the installation, but in short, they were a good match with the Jinko panels in terms of voltage and current. However, this presents our first problem because the Solis inverter just sees the voltage and current for the complete string of eight panels, and thus can't measure and track the power for the two new panels separately. Well, fair enough, I sort of expected that would be the case. But I do know that Solis Cloud will chart various parameters, including power, for each of the two strings, which is almost as good, because I could then prorata the E string power between the six Jinko and two Trina panels. Pulling up the traces for DC power on string 1, the east facing bank, and string 2, the west facing bank, and choosing a nice sunny day, we can clearly see that the expanded east facing array is generating noticeably more power at its peak than the west. In this example, around 2.7 kilowatts as compared to 1.8 kilowatts. All good then. However, whilst we can find the instantaneous power at any one point in time, there's no totaled up figure for either string for the complete day. Bummer. OK, well let's try the month or year timeframes rather than day. Even bigger bummer, it will only display the all up yield for both strings combined for any one day or month. Back to square one then. Well, not quite. Remembering some dim and distant school maths, there are ways you can find the area under a curve which in this case would enable us to calculate the power generated by each string. And after a quick troll around the interweb, I spent a bit of time playing around exporting the daily data from Solis Cloud and trying a couple of different methods. But fear not, I'm not about to dive into integrals and all that math stuff. My viewer numbers are already low enough before I start boring everyone to death. Whilst this method can give you a reasonably sensible figure for the power generated by each string, it's only for one day, and the accuracy falls off a cliff for anything less than a really sunny day. Before we continue, can I make a small request? If you are enjoying this video, please do hit the like button as it helps me reach a wider audience, and consider subscribing if you've not done already. Thanks. So, maybe I'm overcomplicating things. What if I just compared the total power generated since I installed the new panels with the same periods in 2023 and 24? That should give me a rough indication of how well the panels are working, or not. But, according to the Met Office, 2025 was the sunniest year since records began in 1910, so surely that will make any comparison a bit dubious, to say the least. Well, let's see. First of all, putting aside sunny or cloudy weather, what should I actually expect? Totalling up the projected annual output using PVGIS, first for the original two banks of six Jinko panels, and secondly for the two new Trina panels, I should expect to generate an additional 723 kilowatt hours each year, representing a 21.5% increase. We've already seen that you can get significant variation year to year, with 2023 being about 4% above the annual PVGIS projection, and 2024 about 7% below. So knowing that, let's compare April through December for 2025 against the average of 23 and 24 together. What does that give us? Well, in 2023, we generated 3,060 kilowatt hours, and in 2024, 2,686 kilowatt hours, 
giving an average of 2873 kilowatt hours. The comparable figure for 2025 was 3452 kilowatt hours, representing a 20.1% increase, which is within 1.5% of what PVGIS said it should be. So, my panels are working as expected then. But, back to that Met Office report. Surely the sunniest year record will be skewing the 2025 figures. Well, if you look at it in more detail, they say that 2025 surpassed the previous sunniest year set in 2003 by 61.4 hours. But 61.4 hours out of an overall total of 1,648 hours is less than 4%. The final comparison I could make then is between the 2025 figures and the PVGIS projection itself. For April through December, PVGIS says I should expect to generate 2866 kilowatt hours from my original 12 Jinko panels. With a comparable total of 3452 in 2025, that suggests a 20.4% increase as a result of adding the two extra panels. What do you think then? Is my methodology sound or have I filed up somewhere? If you have a Solis inverter, do you know of a way to easily pull out cumulative yield data from Solis Cloud for each string for each month? Or, if you've got a different brand of inverter, does your software or app allow you to do this? I'd be interested to know the answer, so please do comment. So, back to that thumbnail. At an average unit cost of 28.5 pence, including VAT, throughout this period, an additional 723 kilowatt hours equates to a value of around 206 pounds per annum. With an implementation cost of £621, that represents a payback of about three years. Or if I also include the cost for strengthening the garage roof, which to be fair I probably should, a cost of £817 and a payback of just under four years. So, have I been able to quantify exactly how much power the new panels have generated? Well, no, but I think I've made the case that they're working close to what they should and what's more, that they haven't impacted the operation of the existing six Jinko panels on the East Bank. In summary then, I'm happy with the increased output they're producing, especially given that they should also bring down the overall system payback time in due course. Now, if I could only squeeze a couple more panels into the West Facing Bank at minimal cost, I'd be laughing all the way to the bank. And with that, I'll call this one done. Hope you found it of some interest. If so, please do give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Cheers.